Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar on reinforced concrete design of bridges to Eurocodes. Today we'll be covering different aspects of reinforced concrete components of, uh, of bridges like piles, um, piers, pier caps, transverse uh, slab design, abutments, walls, uh, etc. Okay, so first of all, we'll have a look at uh, modeling aspects of reinforced concrete components of a bridge and how Midas Civil can be used to streamline the process of uh, analysis, modeling analysis and design. So here I've listed down few of the instances where reinforced concrete components uh, happen to uh, be designed in a bridge. Uh, number one being transverse design of a slab. Uh, where we have to calculate the transverse reinforcement in a grid edge model. So as you can see the slab is split up into longitudinal and transverse elements. Transverse elements are designed as reinforced concrete beams. Then th there can be a scenario of a local analysis of uh, box section. So a reinforced concrete Again, beam column design can be used for designing of uh, flanges and column uh, webs, respectively. Then design of piers and piles, which are generally modeled as line, Im line elements, are designed as uh, reinforced concrete columns. Then f a design of abutments and pile caps, usually they are modeled as uh, plate elements in the software. So, so we don't have any direct checks available for plate elements within the software but what we can do is always extract the wood armor moments uh, which are the equivalent orthogonal slab moments and these can be used to calculate reinforcement applied in the orthogonal directions in a slab then design of diaphragms or deep beam type piers uh, this is where uh, we theoretically use the stratton tie model but again, uh, using the software, we can carry out an analysis. Uh, of course, a check will not be possible as uh, it is not a conventional beam design. So a plate model can be used. Uh, the diaphragm can be modeled as plate or solid. And check we can check the stresses, compression, and tension. And thus calculate uh, the safety of, uh, of, of such type of members. So before going to the basis of design, let's have a look at uh, these different instances which I just mentioned and see how they are modeled within the software. Okay, so uh, this is a case of, uh, of a concrete box uh, girder transverse section. Okay, so the way I've modeled it over here is uh, line, line elements. So if I just display the points, the nodes, Okay, so that's how they have been uh, spaced. Flanges and webs, uh, correct uh, tapering has been used. Section properties, um, just usual section properties, uh, rectangular sections. One meter width has been selected for the design check. Material for any concrete design has to be selected under the concrete design option. Although for analysis it doesn't matter with which material type you select, uh, all that matters is the modulus of elasticity over here for linear analysis. But for design purpose, so checks, we need to assume the correct type of design over here. Okay, so and then next thing is uh, the loads are applied uh, like parapet. So it's a part of a, met uh, a metro project. So uh, basically train loads are assumed over here so we'll have plinth sleepers and uh, live loads okay. and then the other scenario can be a usual uh, typical uh, composite steel bridge uh, with a deck slab So this is a typical village model of a composite steel bridge. Uh, let's have a look at the slab first. So 
So here we have transverse and longitudinal village members. So transverse members have been assigned with uh, simple rectangular uh, cross section properties. So just the thickness of uh, the slab which is which acts as the height of the section and width is center to center spacing of the transverse elements. Again we can also put in some section stiffness scale factors for each of these uh, uh, each of these elements so that to make sure that uh, the the correct transfer of bending moments is taking place between the longitudinal and transverse beams then uh, let's have a look at uh, other components like bridge piers so i'll just highlight them over here and activate them so this is how the bridge piers and the uh, strip foundation has been defined so there is a pier cap over here and then circular piers uh, straightforward sections and then finally concrete uh, abutments and pile caps and the pile foundation okay so plate elements has been used to define uh, the pile cap and the abutments okay uh, pile springs have been defined as uh, as spring supports point spring supports to ma make sure soil structure interaction happens how to define these springs have been covered in previous webinars for composite uh, integral or and composite steel type of bridges okay so that's basically uh, on how these how how these type of uh, reinforced concrete components are modeled within the software okay now moving on to basis of design so the basis of design uh, uses a strain compatibility approach uh, where a rectangular stress strain block of concrete is assumed as shown here and a strain graph like which, which is uh, shown over here uh, now in Midas the design the bending mo moment resistance design is uh, is that of a singly reinforced section uh, to be conservative so the co reinforcement in the compressive zone is usually ignored material properties for uh, concrete uh, are taken from Eurocode 2 uh, so there's a table there which specifies all the important uh, material parameters of different classes of concrete and also the material safety factors which has to be used um, the concrete stress strain curve as uh, as covered in the previous slide uh, is of a rectangular um, in nature which is more conservative and is easier to calculate for reinforcement the same curve which is given in Eurocode 2 is followed um, which is an idealized type of uh, bilinear or elastoplastic model then time dependent properties very important for uh, reinforced concrete type of design uh, we need to make sure that the correct uh, age of concrete has been defined in the construction stages and also that the creep and shrinkage properties and the compressive strength gain of concrete has been entered correctly so let's see how uh, in a construction stage analysis uh, these properties are defined so in the properties tab there's a creep and shrinkage function where we define the strength of concrete relative humidity notional size based on that we get a creep coefficient and shrinkage strain curve which is then put in uh, feed it in the software uh, and similarly compressive strength gain is used okay like this we define and when we are actually defining the construction stages we need to make sure that each element has been defined with the correct age of concrete okay so if our goal is to calculate creep and shrinkage properties then we will put a certain age over here i put it zero here because in this example we are not we are not covering creep and shrinkage uh, we are not checking the creep and shrinkage results so it is in essential to make sure that um, if you are going to check the substructure um, elements for uh, creep and time dependent effect then we put in some value let's say 28 days or whatever 
when when the load is actually applied on the substructure uh, and uh, that will make sure that the uh, elastic modulus is being used correctly okay so for the uh, for the composite section they have been defined uh, uh, correctly as seven days for concrete uh, which was in the case here which where six after six days the concrete becomes composite six days of pouring the concrete so that's why for transverse elements and for longitudinal elements age of concrete was defined as seven days now let's see the ULS checks of how bending a uh, moment of resistance and shear torsion are calculated so uh, bending moment resistance is calculated based on a strain compatibility approach uh, we assume a neutral axis depth and then uh, that because of that neutral axis depth assumption and the strain of reinforcement is calculated because the concrete strain is assumed to be uh, to have achieved its upper limit of uh, points 0035 and based on the neutral axis depth we get the uh, reinforcement strain and then based on the reinforcement strain we can calculate the total compressive force total tension force if the compression equals to tension uh, then we have achieved the correct neutral axis otherwise we repeat the iteration and thus we finally get the neutral axis depth when compression equals tension so the design is that of an under reinforced section and uh, and this uh, complete iteration is done by the software automatically okay so when we get the neutral axis uh, it's all about check taking the lever arm about uh, the neutral axis for both compression and tension forces to obtain the limiting moment of resistance shear resistance is again um, uh, based on uh, two conditions uh, if the concrete is cracked uh, which is determined by flexural stress uh, increasing increasing this tensile limit then if it is cracked we assume this particular equation for calculating the shear resistance of concrete if it is uncracked then this particular equation is used in case the applied shear is greater than either of these two values uh, then we will have to design for vertical shear reinforcement otherwise nominal shear is sufficient nominal shear reinforcement is sufficient now when we are doing when we're doing the vertical shear reinforcement check we use the strut time model so we have a strut angle that we assume theta where cot theta varies from 1 to 2.5 so based on that angle and also the angle of the tension cord itself uh, so suppose uh, for for a straight up which is inclined at certain angle um, the formula equation will differ it will depend on that particular angle but usually we use vertical stirrups so we use this equation and thus uh, the total uh, shear force is shear uh, resistance is calculated carried by the vertical shear reinforcement now whatever difference uh, uh, what whatever extra tensile force we get in the tie bar which is calculated by this equation that should be resisted by the residual moment so one more check that we need to do which the software doesn't uh, doesn't do automatically for us that we need to do manually is that make sure that uh, this particular force delta F is less than the the residual moment divided by the lever arm with from the uh, from the tensile reinforcement okay uh, another thing to note is that uh, the software does uh, does not assume a tapered section profile uh, for shear resistance check. So, in case if you are are um, uh, if you if you want to take the beneficial effect of the tensile or compression uh, cord inclination, that you will have to do manually. So, whatever horizontal component results in a vertical resistance to the ten, uh, to the shear that particular effect has to be taken in separately in excel spreadsheets to increase the overall shear resistance torsion resistance checks so uh, in the software uh, torsion resistance checks are not done for the column sections um, so but again these are st straightforward checks which uh, 
which you know, can be done using Excel sheets um, in case there is need for a torsion check. Okay, reinforce concrete columns uh, in the software are designed uh, using a moment uh, interaction curve. So actual force and moment interaction curves, which is shown over here. So this is the kind of stress strain graph that we get usually for a column section. Okay, we have both uh, steel in compression and tension zone. So both are considered in this case. Okay, uh, for a for a uniaxial uh, type of bending, this particular equation is used for a biaxial bending. Then we use such kind of equations along with a biaxial moment interaction diagram. And moving on to SLS checks, so serviceability checks are uh, basically three types. Uh, you have stress limitation, deflection check, and crack fit check. The stress limitation in the software is checked for uh, allowable tensile stress of concrete, allowable compression stress, and uh, allowable tensile stress of reinforcement. Ideally, this should be checked for each step of construction. So each time of construction, we should have a stress limit check applied. Okay, in, We can do that in the software because there is ability to perform construction stage analysis. And we can run this check at different time intervals. Similarly, crack width checks will depend upon the exposure class of concrete, the, the, the reinforcement diameter used and the, the nominal cover that is used. So uh, this is again uh, based on uh, the, the Eurocode 2. Okay. So let, let's have a look at uh, how uh, these type of checks are applied in the software. So let's see some examples. So we'll look at beam column, beam checks, column checks. Okay, so let's take this model. So first of all, to carry out any concrete design check, we need to make sure that we have got the load combinations in place under the concrete design tab. Okay, so I have put in one ULS combination strength type and two SLS combination serviceability type. You can put in n number of uh, combinations here just for sake of example I am selecting these three then the next step is to is to go to design reinforce concrete design select euro code and partial safety factors which are automatically put in based on the code but you can change based on national annex then you have uh, concrete material where you can define the grade of reinforcement and the concrete grade. So if you want to change the concrete grade anytime, you can do that from here. Okay, then uh, we have a serviceability parameters where we select the required uh, uh, reinforced concrete elements, select them, suppose select these elements over here and defines the stress parameters. So whatever um, are given in national annex we just put in over here exposure class of concrete and for crack control for frequent and quasi permanent what are the crack width checks that are to be applied okay and then uh, there is an option for beam section data for checking now how does the software know that which is to be designed as a beam and which is to which element to be designed as a column so by default, any vertical member, uh, will, uh, which is vertical about the global axis, uh, will be defined as a column automatically. And any horizontal mem member will be treated as a beam uh, member. So they will be designed as reinforced concrete beam. Now, most of the cases, we will not have a perfect beam or perfect column. This is uh, kind of a more of a ideal situation over here but if you have a vertical say super elevation or maybe um, a horizontal curve or anything like that a vertical curve then we can force an element to be to act as a beam or column so this is where the modify member type comes into picture we select an element and say that it is to be designed as a beam or column okay and the software will or will treat it as a beam or column okay Another thing that we need to make sure is uh, the serviceability combination type. 
So this is where we define which type of combination, serviceability combination is frequent or characteristic. We just drag it over here, click on this arrow and select say SLS1 is characteristic, SLS2 is frequent case. Okay, then we put in reinforcement for checking. So beam section data for checking is used for this purpose. So let's say transverse element, transverse slab I want to design. So in the transverse beam I put in some top and bottom reinforcement like this. So from the drop down I can select. Stirrups have to be entered even for slabs because the way it is the design takes place is that it takes into account the slab transverse slab as a beam uh, for each transverse element. And for every beam, the shear design is carried out by default. So stirrups have to be entered. Similarly, for pier cap and for strip footing, we can do it this way. Crack width check, uh, dry or humidity cases can be selected from here. Okay, so once we are satisfied with the setting, we can run a quick beam checking. Okay, so uh, I have selected uh, to speed up the design process. Uh, you can just select few beam members, beam elements that you are focusing on, and just run those checks. Um, so right now, it will give uh, this kind of a table, which is which is a summary of all the uh, members that it has checked: transverse, pier cap, and strip footing. If you want to see element by element, then that can also be done. So this is per element. So member num element number five, six, seven. So every element it has checked individually. But let's look at the critical section sections uh, by going to section tab. So both strength and serviceability checks can be done. So if I go to strength, uh, let's say transverse and go to graphic, it will give me a summary of the check. So that's the um, start end, and middle part of that element where the check has been performed. This is the checking ratio for negative moment for positive moment and this is the shear capacity check. Of course for transverse member it doesn't make uh, sense to do a shear capacity check. Now if I select each member for instance I can even look at the detailed calculation report. So let's do that. Let's select for example the peer cap. Okay. It will give you a detailed step-by-step step check, uh, like material properties used, reinforcement pattern selected, straight ups, um, design parameters used. So this is where it is calculating the the st rectangular stress strain block parameters for the rectangular stress strain block. Then moment capacity is calculated. So check for search for neutral axis. So it is identified uh, in one trial the neutral axis of concrete section and moment capacity is check so, uh, so once we get the uh, moment capacity okay for both negative and positive bending moment then it moves on to shear capacity where it checks the um, shear strength of concrete first by checking whether the section is cracked or uncracked. So two types of uh, uh, checks can be there. And finally, uh, the shear enforcement is checked. Okay, so that's how it is, uh, the checks, ULS checks are done. Similarly, uh, wh whichever uh, result is marked in red, it means those sections are failing. Okay, you can see the summary over here. N means uh, N M E D, which is the applied actual and bending uh, forces, and uh, N M R D are the applied. Uh, sorry, N M M E D is the negative uh, moment uh, applied moment, and this is the negative uh, moment capacity positive applied moment and the positive moment capacity and similarly for shear and shear capacity now there may be a scenario where uh, for example you have a tapered section like this so software doesn't support the design of tapered section 
So for such cases, what you can do is uh, you can define it as an equivalent uh, rectangular beam. So let's say this element you can always section go to section for design and select uh, say pier tapered one, modify and define it as a rectangular section, whichever equ equivalent uh, dimensions you want to give and then you can ch uh, run the check. So whatever sections you have defined under this tab, database or user tab, those sections can be designed automatically by the software. It almost covers all types of sections. So most of the cases we will not need to use this feature, section for design, but in case if you have a non-standard section, you can always, uh, this is for the beam design by the way, if you have a non-standard beam design, beam section, you can always uh, go for section for design and modify it. For columns, we can do any type of section check, general section uh, within the software. So let's move on to the column checks now. Again for columns, it's going to be the same thing. Uh, we select column section data for checking. So pile and peer. So these are both uh, circular sections. So this is how we define the effective um, cover and the sizes of rebars. So we give two options for the sizes and the number of uh, reinforcement bars that we want. So I've just selected the peers over here for the check. So just one peer and just to so that it runs quickly. So I'm doing the column checks. So the checks OK. So draw PM curve, it will show me the moment interaction curve. So typically it is a uniaxial bending that is happening. And the graphic result will show me the, the summary of the checks. Okay, now moving on to a detail check. So if I go to the detail check, detail, it will, it will show me the similar type of uh, result. So slenderness checks are first done. Magnified forces moments calculated. Uh, we can define a moment magnification factor. So right now software is assuming the moment magnification factor itself. Uh, but we can also set up the moment magnification factor uh, by using the common parameters option. You have an equi equivalent uh, moment factor. So you can put in some values over here or you can let the software calculate it. Uh, effective length for column can be set up over here. So you can put the values, uh, maybe select the condition from here or maybe s or s put your own equivalent moment factor, uh, equivalent length factor for the, if, uh, for the column. Okay, so once uh, this slenderness ratios is cal are calculated, actual force is uh, calculated, actual force and moments and the applied shear force, then uh, the design parameters which includes uh, for biaxially loaded column the moment resistance is checked for different conditions then shear capacity is the same way uh, we do for uh, beams except that this will have some benefit of the actual compression acting and then finally the serviceability checks so exposure class is defined and based on that the stress checks have been calculated over here. Okay, so that's how beam and column checks are done. This we can do for any member. Uh, f for columns, we can do for any particular member. If there is any general section to be checked, then there is a column general section data for checking. All we have to do is, uh, when, once we have a general section, it will come up over here. We can plot the reinforcement manually by using the point option. Just click on different areas, snap on the different points over the section to set up the reinforcement and then the rest of the process is same uh, we use the column section data uh, for checking uh, to get the results out for ULS and SLS checks finally uh, for the 
slabs and walls what we do is uh, we define um, we, we, we define the uh, direction of the rein reinforcement first of all so here we have uh, uh, define a, uh, we have to define a domain first so let's say if my concern is to calculate the wood armor moments the equivalent design moments in the reinforcement direction in in a plate element mesh so let's say I just activate the plates okay and I have to define a domain first so that can be done in node element define domain so I've already set up a domain over here okay and then a subdomain so I select all these elements and define as um, a domain direction 1 is reinforcement direction 0 degrees to the global X this is my one direction for reinforcement the other direction of reinforcement is 90 degrees to this direction so once that is selected now the I will be getting the wood armor moments in these two direction so result forces plate forces moments and uh, then select wood armor moments define the top bottom or both directions say top of the section direction 1 and that is my uh, wood armor moment in the direction 1 in on the top the slab so if I turn on the legend and maybe just putting the legend correctly over here so this is the moment variation that I get select average nodal ok so that's the moment distribution per unit width on the top of the slab in the x direction similarly in the y direction in the top we get this kind of a distribution so this comes in handy for checking uh, the rebars in either direction of course uh, we can always use directly the moment uh, distribution option so mxx will give me the moment about say user coordinate system if I want mxx so moment in the x direction bending in the x direction or bending in the y direction again I can also draw cutting line diagrams so like this type of diagrams can be plotted to check the variation of the moments along a particular line so th all these checks will help any particular model that we have done using plate elements um, to extract the forces out in from in a particular direction and then manually design the reinforcement okay so coming back to this uh, webinar pre presentation uh, the last thing is diaphragm checks and deep beam checks so uh, for diaphragm checks uh, we usually do the strut and tie model for quick estimate so like in this scenario where we have a point load applied at the, uh, at the bearing point so we draw the strut tie model like this and we get the forces in the different zones a b c so we have nodes over here different types of nodes are there CCT, CTT, etc. And um, and for each node, a at each node, the compression, f uh, the allowable compressive stress, and the allowable tensile tensile stress are checked for. Uh, to do the same thing in the software, we will have to generate a plate model. So this particular entire thing is just uh, modeled as plate elements. So we use the auto mesh option, just like we did for the pile cap. We use it here. So plate element is given a thickness of 1 meter let's say in the out of plane direction and the goal is to obtain uh, stresses in uh, along different uh, along the orthogonal directions in plate elements so these stresses are then checked for allowable compression and tension and that's how we can do a deep beam or a diaphragm check uh, using the software okay so that brings us to the end of the presentation today uh, we covered most of the things that uh, reinforce concrete components we use for uh, and how a Midas Civil can be used to design 
reinforce concrete frame elements, beams, columns, and how to extract forces from slabs and walls, pile caps, etc. And then to do a hand checks uh, to calculate rebars. For any questions, queries, or presentations, please contact the details shown here. Uh, thank you for attending the webinar. Bye for now.